Welcome everyone. Today we're diving into the concepts of mathematical functions, domain and range, function notations, and function types in the realm of computer science. Functions serve as the cornerstone of mathematical relations, assigning every input to its unique output. Take for example a simple function, f of x equals x squared, where x is a natural number. The output, f of x, is just the square of the input. Let's apply this. For input 1, the output is 1 squared equals 1. For the input 2, the output is 4, and an input of 3 gives us an output of 9. Notice the consistent pairing of each input to its unique output. Viewed through the lens of our squaring function, we can see that for every unique input, we have a clear, distinct output. Crucially, this one-to-one -one relationship mirrors the very essence of mathematical functions. Knowing your input values is vital, especially in recognizing the domain of a function. This domain consists of all x values that make the function defined. In the case of the function f of x equals 1 over x, all real numbers except 0 qualify. Why? Because 0 in the denominator means an undefined function. On the flip side, let's consider the function f of x equals x squared. Here, the range, or the variety of possible output values, will always be greater than or equal to zero. Now, the connection between domain and range becomes clear. Your function takes valid input, computes it, and generates output forming the range. Having a grasp of this is indeed an essential step in piercing the complexities of mathematical functions. Function notation, symbolized as f of x, is a pivotal concept in mathematics. Here, f identifies the function, pointing towards the operation to be performed. x is our input variable, the value we choose to feed into our operation. As an illustration, let's consider the function f of x equals x squared. By substituting inputs like negative 1 or 2, we see the outputs are 1 or 4 respectively. An essential insight of functions revolves around understanding the impact of input modifications on the outcome. Using the function f of x equals x plus 3 as an example, notice the changes in output when we vary our input x. An input of 2 gives us output 5, while an input of 3 results in output 6. This connection underscores the influence our choice of input has on the final output of a function. Injective functions, commonly known as one-to-one -one functions, ensure each input is tied to a unique output, offering distinct results without any overlap. This injectivity shines when considering the function f of x equals 2x. In this case, varying x gives us distinct f of x values, demonstrating vividly the concept of uniqueness in injective functions. Another way to present this is, for our function f of x, if f of a equals f of b, then a must also equal b, further cementing the idea of injective functions. When we consider the uniqueness of output with each distinct input in injective functions, we lay a foundation for understanding more complex function mappings. Surjective functions ensure that each element in the codomain has a pre-image, representing another aspect of function behavior. This property implies that all output values have at least one corresponding input. Let's delve into an example. The function f of x equals x minus 2 exhibits surjectivity. Here, for any real number y, we can always find an input x equals y plus 2, so that f of x equals y. This guarantees all potential outputs are tied to an input. Being able to solve y equals x minus 2 for any y in the codomain is what makes this function surjective. By applying this principle, you can identify and verify surjectivity in more complex functions, solidifying your understanding of this foundational mathematical concept. Objective functions marry injective and surjective properties, exemplifying a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence between domain and codomain. Take, for instance, our function f of x equals x plus 3. By definition of injective, if f of a equals f of b, then a must be b. To demonstrate surjectivity, we adjust to x equals y minus 3, confirming f of x equals y for every y. Consider another function, f of x equals x plus 1, defined for integers. Here, unique input x again yields unique output f of x, illustrating injectivity. Matching a given y, the corresponding x equals y minus 1 always exists in our domain, satisfying surjectivity. Demonstrating both properties, this function is, hence, bijective. 
These bijective functions elegantly map every element in the domain to a unique element in the range, reinforcing our understanding of function behavior. Reversing operations of functions unlocks the concept of inverse functions. When morphed by function f of x equals y, x can be retrieved through applying its inverse f inverse of y equals x, effectively retracing the operation's steps. This is demonstrated by f of x equals 2x plus 3, where reconfiguring y equals 2x plus 3 for x births, the inverse f inverse of y equals y minus 3 over 2. Our journey illuminates the requirement of bijectivity, which ensures existence of an inverse. Bijective functions are both injective and surjective, guaranteeing a unique inverse for each function element. Without bijectivity, the task of finding the inverse remains futile. Inverse functions become visually intuitive when plotted alongside their original function, illustrating their mirror-like relationship. Function composition intertwines two functions into a compound function, where the output of one function acts as the input for the next. A process represented using the notation f compose g of x, which signifies f of g of x. Picture this with functions f of x equals 2 times x and g of x equals x plus 3. Function composition applies these functions together as f of g of x equals 2 times x plus 3, which simplifies to 2x plus 6. This operation is effectively feeding function g's output as the meal for function f, presenting a fundamental means of function interaction. The key to implementing functions in Python lies in the def keyword. For instance, the function fx, returning x plus 3, is defined as follows. Define f of x return x plus 3. Once our function is implemented, we can begin to explore its properties. Using a Python dictionary, we can verify the injectivity of a function, which ensures each input has a unique output. Consider 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, where keys represent unique inputs and values are distinct outputs. This provides a way to visually examine and confirm injectivity. Beyond this, we must consider error handling, which is indispensable for robust programming. This is where a try accept block comes into play. By capturing and managing potential errors, it ensures our operations involving mathematical functions run smoothly, even under unexpected situations. Let's start with an important cornerstone. A function maps an input to a unique output. For instance, if we consider the function f of x equals x squared, inputting three and four would yield nine and 16 respectively. This notation, f of x, is what we typically use to represent our function. Going beyond mathematics, functions have a diverse role in computation. They organize code, automate tasks, and boost efficiency. Take the Python function square. It's a simple yet powerful tool that returns the square of any input provided. Applying this practically, we find functions like f of x equals the absolute value of x invaluable. This function, which calculates the magnitude of a value, assures us non-negative results, a necessity when we're computing distances. Thus, from their fundamental role in mathematics to their practical applications in programming and problem solving, functions prove to be indispensable.